This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. This is the final lecture on discounted cash flow techniques, chapter of the lecture notes, uh, and is uh, something called multi period capital rationing. Now, you will remember from the um, earlier financial management exam, in those days you were tested on what we call single period capital rationing. Uh, and what that was is where you'd got several projects you wanted to invest in, but there was a limit to how much capital was available for investment. That's what we mean by rationing. So you had enough to invest in all the projects, and we had to decide how best to invest it. Well, in this exam, they can test the same thing, but uh, as you see, multi-period capital rationing. Although, as I will explain as we go through, all you can be expected to do is set up the problem. You can't actually be expected to solve it. Anyway, to make sense of the whole thing, as always, let's look at the example, example seven. Paris PLC has three projects available for investment with the following cash flows and NPVs. So I'm not going to talk down all of them, but project A, for instance, uh, will need to invest 5,000 at time zero, uh, another 4,000 at time one. Then we get inflows of 8,000 in three year, two years and 4,000 in three years. Uh, the MPV, if this was in the exam, you'd probably have to calculate, but it's easy calculating, clearly. But these are correct. The MPV of A, at a cost of capital of 10%, is 976. And all right, there are three projects there. Um, all the projects give positive MPVs, so they're all worth while accepting. And do appreciate, there's nothing to tell us they're mutually exclusive. It's not asking us to say which is best. Is it A or is it B or is it C? If it was, you'd pick the one with the biggest MPV, which is B. But here, they're all available. And so, sensibly, we'll invest in all projects that give a positive MPV. You'd invest in all three. The only problem is, of course, to invest in all three. At time zero, the capital you'd need, you'd need 5,000 for A, 8 for B, 6 for C. You'd need a total of 19,000. But the problem is, it says at time zero, there is only 14,000 available. The capital is rationed. And similarly, at time one, to invest in all of them, 4,000, B actually gives us 2,000, C another 6,000 paid out. So a net 8,000, we've only got 5,000. But there's the problem, we cannot invest in all three. And so the question is, how are we going to invest the money? What's the best way of investing the money so as to get the best overall MPV? Uh, and just as we uh, had it uh, in the earlier exam when it was single period rationing, we're told the projects are infinitely divisible, which means that, all right, if you want, you can do all of A and pay out five, pay out four, get in eight, get in four. But we can do fractions of a project. So, for instance, you could do half of A. And if you did half of A, You'd have half the outflows, half the inflows, and half the MPV. So perhaps not terribly practical in most cases, but whatever. We assume we can do fractions of a project. We can't change our mind halfway through. So if we start off doing half of A, we've got to carry on doing half of A. But half of A would mean half the cash flows and then half the MPV. Well, as I said earlier, and as you see as we go through, you cannot be expected in this exam to come up with a final solution. But you can be expected to what we call formulate the problem. 
And so let's formulate it. First of all, we define symbols. For fairly obvious reasons, I will let A be the uh, fraction invested in project A. So it may be 100% 1. If I only decide to invest in half of A, it would be point, A would be 0.5. If I only decide to invest in a quarter of A, um, little A would be 0.25. But similarly, B will be the proportion invested in B, and C the proportion invested in C. One other thing, though, look at the very last line of this. We are required to formulate the model any capital not used in year zero may be put on deposit for one year and earn interest at 7%. What does that mean? Why on earth? Remember, we're borrowing money. The MPV is 10%. We're borrowing money at 10%. Why should I be prepared to borrow money at 10% if I'm only going to earn interest on it at 7? Well, the reason is that you see, I am limited for the cash in a year's time. It might be better not to use all the cash we've got at time zero, but leave some of it to give us more cash next year. We don't know, but it just might be better to perhaps only spend 12,000 this year. We did have 14, but that leaves us at 2,000 left over, which would mean we've got more next year. Uh, and so uh, it could be worth doing. Uh, and if we are going to carry money forward to next year, well, we might as well earn interest on it, uh, however little. And so I do need another symbol. I will let ooh, P naught be the amount put on deposit at time zero. It may end up with P naught may decide it's zero and we don't put any on deposit. But I've explained why we might. There is that possibility. It would only happen in that year because at time one, all right, we're limited on the capital available. But there's no limit in time two, so there's no point in putting any money on deposit at 7% at time one. We'll be paying at 10% to borrow it. If we don't need it, don't borrow it sort of thing. Um, there'd be no point. We don't need it uh, at time two. Well, now let's set up the problem. <coughs> You'll see it is effectively linear programming, which you should have done in the earlier management accounts exam. We first of all set up uh, the constraints, the limitations on us. And of course, the obvious limitations are the amount available at time naught and at time one. So at time zero, if we're investing in fractions A, B, and C of those projects, how much will we need in total? Well, A, 5,000 times A the proportion, the fraction of A we're doing. In addition, B, 8,000 times B, where B, it may be 0.5, we do half of B, it may be 0.1, we do 10% of B, and so on. In addition, 6,000 C. So that's the total we're going to need to invest in these three projects. In addition, remember, although it may turn out to be zero, we may put an amount on deposit. But the total there invested, it's limited to 14,000. The total must be less than or equal to 14,000. Some people say, well, why isn't, it, why isn't it equal? Well, remember, you can't change your mind. So it may be that at time one, we were forced to do less of each of these uh, projects, and therefore, at time zero, we didn't spend all 14. 
So why wouldn't we put on deposit? Well, I've already said, we may well put on deposit to give more next year, but appreciate we are going to be losing money on it. We'd be borrowing it at 10, investing at 7. We may decide not to. Uh, in a similar way at time 1, Uh, what would we need? Uh, a needs 4,000, so the proportion A would be 4,000 A. We get money back from B. So although you're paying out 4,000, you're getting back 2,000 B. And uh, you're paying out 6,000 C. Uh, we, I've explained why you wouldn't put any money on deposit. So there's the total we'd need at time 1. That must be less than or equal to the amount available, which is 5,000. <coughs> uh, but again, if we had put money on deposit at time zero, it would still be there at time one. We'd have more available. So in addition to the 5,000, we'd have the money on deposit P0 together with interest, and it says it could earn interest at 7%. So to add on a year's interest, uh, multiply by 1.07. So whatever answer we ended up with for A, B, C and P0, they must satisfy both of those limits. In addition for completeness, a, B, and C, they must be uh, greater than or equal to zero. You might decide to invest in zero of A, fine, you can invest a negative amount. Uh, and they must be less than or equal to one. We can do any fraction of A, B, and C, but we can't do more than one of A, more than one of B. And finally, P naught. Uh, well, again, it would be important to include this, because although we don't have to put anything on deposit at time zero, so the answer might be zero, uh, it can't be negative. P naught must be greater than or equal to zero. Well, those are the limits, and any values we end up with for A, B, C, and P naught must satisfy those inequalities. Finally, though, we need to set out what the objective is. And the objective is to get the maximum total MPV. And what will the MPV be? Well, I've already said before, if we, if for example, we did half of A, we'd get half of the total MPV and so on. So if we do A of A, the MPV will be 976A, 2529B, 862C. Ah, but one extra thing. Remember, there was, could have been, potentially an extra investment. In that at time zero, we put P0 on deposit. And we get back at time one. P0 together with interest. And so, what's the net present value of that before I finish this off? At time zero, we put P0 on deposit. At time one, we get back P0 together with interest. It's like an extra investment, and what's the net present value of it? Well, the present value of P0 now is P0. Uh, the present value of um, an amount at time 1, well, we might as well discount from first principles, but still, it's at, what was the cost about 10%? So the discount factor, 0.909. So P times 1 point, sorry, 1 1.07 times 0.909. It comes to 0.973 P naught. 
So we're investing P0, we're getting back 0.973 P0, not per annum, sorry. So the net present value, that one minus 0.973 is 0.027 P0, negative. I said right from the beginning that you are losing money on this. Borrowing at 10, investing at 7, but it just might be worth losing money on that to have more money available in the uh, first year because uh, we could perhaps get better investment. But to complete the picture, the overall MPV 976A, 2529B, 862C minus 0 0.027P0. And so there's the problem formulated. What we then want to do is work out values for A, B, C, and P naught that maximised this equation subject to those limits, those constraints. However, as I've written in the notes, and as I said at the beginning, even at this level, you can't be expected to solve it. You should have done linear programming before in the earlier management accounts exam, but you were only expected to know the graphical solution, uh, which can only deal with two variables. Here, of course, we've got four variables, A, B, C, P, naught. You can't do it graphically. There is a method called simplex, but that's not in your syllabus. And so if you are asked that, probably it would only be part of the question, but you could only be asked to formulate the problems I've done here. Again, you can't be expected to solve it. Fine. Well, although we've more to say about discounting for other reasons, that certainly is the end of this chapter.